So the next thing we want to do is to add a drop down. So not only do we want to look at population, which is what we've been working on so far, but we want to add households and housing units. These are different measures within the US Census. So we can grab this form HTML here that has the HTML for the drop down, which you learned, and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to put that in the chart just below the H1. So this is all HTML. We want it to go above the chart, but below the title of the chart, the heading of the chart. And we can come back here and test that. And we have a lovely drop down. It doesn't do anything yet, but we have the items that we want to have in the drop down. Now we have to get it to function. So let's get our complete JSON data from the cities array. We now want to add units and households to each line for each city. So I'm just going to copy the whole array and replace it because that's the easiest way to do it. So we make sure that we do it correctly. So we have all the data for all the areas and we have the for loop here that is going to read that. We want to add a title for each measure that's going to go on the form so that we can see which measure it is that we're looking at. So I'm going to add this for category and I'm going to add it below the form. So here's the form that has the drop down and somewhere right below that I'm going to include this category of div right here. That will be able to change based on the category. So in our initial view of the chart, we want to have our for loop, which we've already established, but then also have an element that changes that category depending on what is in the dropdown. For now, we're just going to have it say population so we can see what that looks like. So I'm just going to put that right above the for loop. Um, a get element ID to change the inner HTML of the cat ID that we just established. So see what that looks like and we'll refresh. And now we have population showing up here. We'll do some other things to make that look a little bit better, spread things out a little bit in a second. So that's the initial view of the chart. Now we have to create this function that actually goes through, reads the item that's in the drop down, and changes the elements on the chart. So this function below switches the JSON data in the chart based on which measure is selected. Note that you only have to write the name once, since that is the same for all three measures, the name of the city. Um, each part of the if statement handles the changing measure, whether it's population, households, or housing units. Then it displays the measure using the cat ID and executes the for loop to display the appropriate data. So I'm just going to grab this whole entire function and I'm going to put this inside the script. So if we go here and refresh the chart, we will be able to change the measures for each one and we can see the numbers changing and the the category changing here at the top. We don't have that sort of slick move yet with the animation, but we've got a pretty interactive chart at this point. Pretty cool. Let's take a closer look at this select measure function, just so you understand what's happening with it. We've created a variable named M for measure that is actually just holding whatever selected in the form. That's what this does right here. And then we have an if statement that says if the measure equals population, so if the dropdown says it's population, then it should do this, where it should get the elements from the JSON that have to do with population. And as it goes through the loop, it uses the incrementer i to go through each one of the elements in the city's array, which is our JSON. So it would look up zero, which is Austin, and all the information associated with Austin, one for Fort Worth, and two for Lubbock. So each time it goes through, it will increment that and update it for population. And then we have an if statement that says if it's households, it does the same thing. And if it's housing units, it does the same exact thing. Now, if you look at this, we have the initializer, the initial look at what the chart looks like when we first get to the page. And then we have basically the same thing with a few elements slightly different, but several times. So it's pretty redundant. So we could probably clean this up a little bit and have a little bit cleaner JavaScript. So I've got this worked out for you in the exercise. If we go over here, we'll see we're first going to add an array to hold the measures because in the future we may want different measures and we want a function that would be able to read in whatever measures we're going to be using. 
So I'm going to copy that and put it in the script right below the JSON, right here. Is our JSON? Then I'm going to create a write data function that has everything in it that we've already had in our for loop, but it puts it in a function so we can use it over and over again. And this is the initial time that we're calling it. When we open the page, we want to make sure that there's some data showing. And in this case, we want to show population, which happens to be the element at measures zero in the array. The first element of the array is number zero. Remember that. And I'm just pointing out here that I'm using comments in this code in a few places, and that's what these double slashes are. It just is telling me this is where we call the function for the very first time. So I'm just going to replace everything that was in that um, initial area where we first wrote the chart right here with this function. So now we have function write data, and then we have an improved and much shorter select measure function, cell measure. So I'll copy that and include that in here instead. And we will save this and let's check it out and see if it still works now. So that looks good and it's changing. So we just had better, different, shorter code. We were able to reuse things that we'd already created by creating this write data function up here. And then by creating this um, array for the measures, we could actually, if we wanted to do a chart on something else, we could change the JSON and we could change the items and the measures and that easily we'd have a new chart. Um, so this is the uh, improved select measure function and that's pretty much it. We have a few things now to make the chart look better. First of all, I want to add a border around the chart. So I want just a line at the top and a line at the bottom, a border top and a border bottom, and just a few other things to make it look good, some margin and some padding. So just in the CSS at the top, in the styles, maybe right below the body here, I'll add some CSS for a main div. I will need to include a main div ID around the chart below the drop down form that would include everything else on the page. So let me do that right below the form. I'll say div ID equal main. And then I'll close the div at the bottom of all the form elements right before the script tag. And let's see if that actually does what we wanted it to do. So much better. We have some nice space here between the drop down and the rest of the chart. The chart is still working and we have these nice lines that delineate the chart. Excellent. And then finally, we want to add this simple animation. And so we're going to add a CSS3 transition to draw the divs. Um, we're going to add this last line here to the bars class. Everything else is already there, but if we go into the HTML, and we want to change the bars class right here. We'll add this line. And if we're using Chrome, this should work without a problem because this is the general way to do CSS3 animations. Ooh. Now to be on the safe side because your users are going to be using all different kinds of browsers and they may not be completely up to date with this transition property in CSS3, um, you have to actually use all the different versions here for the browsers that haven't quite um, gotten used to using the full support for this transition. So you have to use the browser prefixes. Um, if we add this as well to the CSS, just right above here. So we'll have all four of them. We'll have the one without any prefixes and then these that work with the prefixes. This should make sure that it works across a range of browsers. So it should still work with a nice easing transition effect. Very simple to get that effect. And then the last thing we want to do is we want to create a tooltip. So we're going to use a little jQuery to do that. I went online and I looked up some tooltips and I found one that was fairly simple to use. So we're going to just add to each one of the items in the JSON a tip. And we want to do that for all three. So I'm just going to grab this tip right here and 
in the JSON area where we have our data for each city, I'm going to add an item for tip. And I'm going to add an item for tip for Lubbock or for Fort Worth. And I'll just say near Dallas. And one for Lubbock and have it say Texas Tech. So now we've got a tip that we want to use. So to add the tip, we need to include the line for the reference to the jQuery. And this is online, so we don't have to do anything with it. We just have to make a reference to it. And we'll put this in the head. Put it up here toward the top after the title. So we'll have access to it. And it just actually gives us, um, it gives us access to everything that's in the jQuery library because we're about to use some jQuery. So we need to include the tooltip code in a function. We're going to put this within the script tag at the bottom of the page. And the first line is the way that all jQuery functions are started. So at the bottom of the page, before the script tab closes, we'll put that. And uh, finally, we're going to add this line to each line after writing the style for the width. So we're going to have to do this every time we do a get element by ID in our code. So we've got one here for the initial view. And then we have it here for households and for housing units. And the tip is the same no matter which measure we're looking at. So let's save this and see if it works. Oh, look, the tooltip comes up. And now all we need to do is to modify the tooltip a little bit to give it a little bit of style so that it looks a little bit better than just popping up there. And we do this by creating some CSS for the tooltip. Just stick that at the bottom of the style section here toward the top of the page. And now we have a nice box beige with rounded corners. And that's what this CSS does. Initially, it's not displayed until it's called. That's why it says display none. It's beige, a certain font size, a height. Um, we're using the border radius, which does the rounded corners, a little bit of padding all the way around, and the color of the text and the border, a very small one pixel solid border that we're using. And the last thing that we can do with this is we may want to offset the position of the tooltip a little bit. So we would do that within the um, function itself where we're calling the tooltip in the jQuery. We can do this offset as a property of calling the tooltip. Okay, so it has a little bit of a different placement. And that's it. And we'll cover this in class in more detail. We'll explain each of the items. I know that it's a little bit confusing right now, but I wanted you to see that you could use some very basic JavaScript, some HTML, some CSS, and some HTML forms, and really make a nice looking animated interactive chart. We'll be moving into some other areas where you'll be able to do charting with some other tools that exist, but this gives you complete control of creating a chart from scratch that reads data. The full code for this, as I mentioned, is in the code repository section on code actually, and it's this first example here, the static example. I also have a percentage example that has the chart sizing, makes it a little bit more responsive. And we won't go through that in class, but it's something that if you want to take a look at and see how I made the percentage change uh, calculations, you can go through that.